What's up guys, it's Lee Michael and Latin how are you guys doing? Today we're reviewing The Wolf Among Us, episode 4, in Cheats Clothing. I'm tired of, I mean, this is like the fourth or fifth time I have to do this today because people have been interrupting me, my brothers, people won't leave me alone, doors are opening, people are screaming, I just can't take it no more, okay? So, take it or leave, this is my view, if someone interrupts it, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say that overall. So this is the fourth episode in a five episode series, I'm going to put that down. Reviewed by Telltale Games, in case you haven't known. Uh, so let's just get into it. This is a spoiler alert for the last three episodes, which is called Faith, Smoke and Mirrors, and A Crooked Mile. So let's just get into it. it. takes place right after the events of A Crooked Mile, with Bigby getting his ass kicked by Bloody Mary, which is one of the new villains of the series. And basically being up in a really brutal world. And I really recommend you should check that episode out, because it's really one of the best episodes yet. And this basically involves with Bigby having to pick himself back up, uh, uh, basically wrap himself up, basically, and try to find the piece Magic Mirror's missing shard, when Mas Magic Mirror has been broken by Crane from Episode 2. Spoiler alert. Um, like I said, this is spoiling the last few episodes, so sorry about that. But it really evolves around Big B has to find the pieces and try to get to the Crooked Man once and for all and take him down. Now, th that's the problem with the story itself. There's no real progression overall. It's little progression, actually. Um... In the first, the first few episodes, they kind of had a pattern, like, a system, like, episode one, Faith. It basically brought us to, like, bringing us into the world of fables, and letting us, to, like, see all these characters really, like, pick up and learn a little bit more and explore the details about them. Episode two involved us trying to see the fallout of what happens to some of these characters when a murder happens. And episode three was trying to pull, like, really try to know who are you as a character of Bigby. As, are you really a man trying to fix things, or are you a man just wants to lose, who wants to lose control of himself? And episode 4 is kind of about trying to pick up the puzzle pieces back together, and try to fix, finish it. But that's the problem with this episode, it's a lot more like a filler episode. I think that's the problem that Tilda has in general, as in episodes. I mean, the, all the episodes are great. They can do season finales, like in Walking Dead, season 1, No Time Left. A great season finale. But I feel like the way they set up the finale isn't as strong as the finale. Like, for example, Walking Dead Season 1, Episode 4, Around Every Corner. A great episode. But it also suffers from things of not really moving forward. It never really moved on. And that's the problem that Smoke and Mirror... Not Smoke and Mirrors. In Sheets Clothing suffers from. It feels like I'm spinning my wheels, but not in a bad way. And it's like, I still love exploring the world of Big B. And in the last few episodes, we really did see a lot of characters. Now, we don't really see uh, too many characters here. We do see uh, one or two more characters. Um, one of them is called the Jersey Devil, which they showed you in reviews. Uh, they already spoiled that damn thing for you. Um, and a few other characters. But the thing about it is, in the last few episodes, they kind of really gave us like a lot to care about them. Like, not only care about them, but made us judge, or made us think, how do we feel about these characters? But in this, like, for Jersey Devil, we just know him as this guy who's who's kind of Italian in some ways, with his little accent or something like that at times, and he's kind of a dick. And that's it. That's all we can, t we can say about him, is he's an Italian dickhead. Not to be offensive to any Italians out there, please don't please take that the wrong way. So, um, back to the point is, the problem I have with this is there's no real actual progression in the game. And I do love the opening overall, this is going to the opening. When Bigby has to fix himself up, when his arm's broken, he has to like fix the bones and rearrange them. And that was a really cool scene because it wasn't just like showing like how visually they can do like with the dismemberment scenes in Walking Dead when he gets his fucking arm cut off. But it also shows the intensity of Bigby showing him as he's not immortal. He's not an immortal character. He can be killed and he has to watch himself, make sure he doesn't go over the line, over the bar of losing control of himself. So I like that. Because it shows real drama and intensity. And that was the first 10 minutes of the game. And the rest of the time, you, you're going to be kind of disappointed. Because of, number one, the length. This is a big problem that a lot of reviewers actually make a ton of, taking tons of points off of the game. The problem with this game is, the last few episodes, they could take you around 90 to 95 minutes to longer to finish. The problem with this episode is, it's actually a lot shorter than those. You can beat this episode in actually... 60 to 85 minutes tops, or 90 minutes, if you're if you're really exploring every single nook and cranny. You can beat, in, like, some reviewers said they beat it in 60 minutes. 
um, other be, uh, people said they beat it in 70 minutes and all that stuff. But I think, in my opinion, I beat it overall in 80 minutes complete completion. And that's kind of a shame. And as soon as the game ended, I kind of wanted more. But I think that's a kind of smart way to leave a cliffhanger, as it seems a cliffhanger as well. I just don't know how they really set it up as well as this. I really like games that are short, but I like them to really fulfill me. It really make me feel like it was worth my money to really play it. Wolf Among Us succeeds and also fails in that part. But I still do love it overall because of the, the, drum, the atmosphere and the dialogue. Holy crap, the dialogue has been getting better and better with Telltale. They know how to write a script for a game that have all these choices and consequences. But that's where it also fails here as well. You see, the problem with episode 4 is, there's no, there is choices you can do, but there's no real consequence. That's a problem here. The, in the last episode, there was consequences for what we did. For example, if we cut, we ripped Grendel's arm off in the first episode when we beat his ass, he would be weak and he would have a grudge on us or something like that. And he wouldn't be good in episode 3, in the beginning when he tries to take down one of the Tweedles. Um... Or if we, like, uh, in episode 1, if we took a, a woodsman or a Tweedle from the bar and arrested him, it had different impacts or different consequences based on the interrogation sequences. But in here, there's no real consequence overall. I felt like it was just stuck on the one road and on the one, like, narrow path. Even though the apartment is, like, a fork across the road, which means there's two parts, and it's, like, an important choice that goes two different ways, that's it. There's no, there's not a lot of real in, in the consequence of that. So that's my main problem with the game. It's a lot of good things, but it just doesn't live up to the same momentum as at the first three episodes did. <laughs> Excuse me. Damn. Um, I really must say that I really do think that this may be the slowest, the weakest link of all the episodes, but I still say buy the game because it's so damn good. If you can tell it's by the dialogue and the act, uh, quick time events, you're going to be in blast. If you love the first three episodes, you had to play to finish off the experience. I mean, it's not like you're going to play the first three episodes and then say no episode four and then play episode five. That wouldn't make any sense, really, would it? It's kind of like like having like PC, like, I don't know, it's like trying to play, like, someone buys you a game, you don't really finish it. It's kind of like that. You have to really finish the experience and really enjoy it overall. I still say recommend. I recommend the like, entire experience overall. So don't worry about that if you like paying a five dollars each month. But I still say it's buyable. I don't want to like wasting my time jabbering around and stuff. I should be getting into it. Which this game time for Trump. It doesn't really like really move forward. It just like goes in a circle and says I'm gonna go in a circle again and really mess with you. That's it. There is a cool action sequence I won't spoil here that involves the Jersey Devil. And it's really well done. I really did like it. That was like one of the best moments of the game. That really had a cool impact. But the other, that's the problem is that the action sequence, in my opinion, is the best part of the game. And that's not really a good thing in some ways. Because the last episodes, they had like dramatic dialogue sequences that was really well done. Like the part with the interrogation scene in episode 2 where you could like talk to the character. And really be nice to them. Force it out of them or persuade them. That's how it felt. But in this, there's no real consequence or choice based on anything. And that's my problem. I'm not going to give it a 6 out of 10. I'm not going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. So calm down about that. I'm not even going to give it lower than that. In my opinion, my final verdict score... Whew. That's a tricky one. I would say 7.5 out of 10. But I still like episode 4 on every corner a lot more than this one. So I'm going to give this episode a 7 out of 10 in my opinion. I still do say check it out. I love Telltale games, and I know they're trying their best, but I wish they made this episode a little bit longer. I think in the layout of the script, when they were writing this, they thought it would have been a great length. But in the overall product, it wasn't as long as it could have been. There's no real consequential choice in this episode, and there's no real plot progression. I wish they could have actually done that. But I, I mean, they could have actually added progression. Like, Smoke and Mirrors, for example. It didn't have a lot of progression. It had, a, like, the story progression wasn't really, like, as well as Faith. Like, Faith, it was like, a little like that. So, Mokumus was like, like a slow walk. And this one is just like, it goes like this. That's it. That's how I feel about this overall, is that it doesn't really work as well as other episodes. I still say check it out, buy the game, 
buy the Lamar series. If you love Telltale, Telltale, you have to buy it. If you love Walking Dead, buy it. It's worth the price of mission alone. Um, so, I won't, um, I'll review Cry Wolf when it comes out. So that's my vlog score, guys. 7 out of 10. Um, I'll review that, uh, the scene of the finale when it comes out. Um, also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like the video, comment below, and subscribe. I'll be reviewing The Walking Dead Season 2 episodes of House Divided in Harm's Way. Sorry for those late reviews, but I have to make up time. I have to do it now, because I'm doing nothing right now. You yeah? know? So that's why I gotta say this. Bye. See my, uh, and also, check out my channel, because I really think it would support me if you guys actually watch my videos. I, I'm sorry that some of my videos are so long. Like the Mario Kart 8 review is like 20 minutes, I believe. Um, I hope that you can actually see some time out of your life for 20 minutes, maybe. To watch the Mario Kart review, or watch my other walking, or not walking, Wolf Among Us reviews, like Smoke and Mirrors and Crook and Mo. I really think you should check those out, because I, I really try to do reviews that are honest and, and real. So, I mean, real, but honest and really do have a real approach on you guys. So, bye guys. Have a good day. Or good night. Whatever you watch this.